Is an aquarium background an absolute necessity? Well, no it's not, but it can have several beneficial effects. One, it can hide cords and other accessories, the wall, whatever happens to be behind your tank, and this can help you focus more on the inhabitants and decor of your aquarium. It can also make for a better lighting effect by preventing backlighting, which can improve photography and video of your fish, and as well as just general viewing. It may also help some shy fish relax a bit. There are many, many different types of backgrounds you can use on your aquarium, from live moss walls to custom 3D backgrounds. Today I'm going to focus on three fairly simple and fairly inexpensive backgrounds that you can use on your aquarium. The first type of background I'll talk about is the ever popular vinyl roll. This has several advantages. One is that it's very readily available. You can find it in most big box pet stores as well as online or at local fish stores. It comes in a variety of colors and patterns. You could get one with a blue background on one side and black on the other side like this roll has. And many of them come with uh, aquascapes or underwater scenes of various types printed on them and then you can reverse it and get a different one. So you have a lot of options in terms of appearance. Some other advantages are that it's fairly durable. It doesn't really get damaged if it gets wet, which is nice when you're using it with an aquarium, of course. And you have a couple of different options as to how you attach it. You can just cut it to fit your tank and then tape it on. But uh, the problem with that is there's a gap between the vinyl and the aquarium glass, which leads to kind of a visual effect that's not quite as appealing. The colors are not quite as clear. Instead, you can use a thin layer of petroleum jelly, or there's a product sold specifically for the purpose of attaching this type of background to your aquarium called Sea View. You apply a thin layer of the Sea View or petroleum jelly to the background, put it up against the glass, and smooth the bubbles out with a credit card, ruler, or similar tool. And it takes a while to do it, but once you've done it, it looks really nice. Now, some of the cons of this type of background are that any type of crease in the vinyl roll will cause bubbles to form and it will be really hard to remove them. And over time those bubbles are going to form no matter what you do and you will have to reattach it to the tank periodically. It, it can last several years in good condition if there are no creases in it, but eventually you'll need to do something. And that's true with tape as well. If you tape it on, the tape will eventually come loose and you'll just have to reattach it, which is not a big deal. Another con of using a vinyl roll is that if you have very strong light coming through the aquarium and you have a pattern on one side of your uh, vinyl roll, that the pattern will show through. I once had a black background on one side with kind of a rocky background on the other side, on the back side, and when light uh, shined through my aquarium, then you could see the rocks through it, which was kind of a strange effect. So keep that in mind as well. The next type is this static cling background. Now I really like this one for several reasons. It has some advantages over the vinyl roll backgrounds. The main one is that when you attach it, uh, it is supposed to stay a lot longer without forming any air bubbles. And so far that has proven to be true with the one that I have. Um, it is a little bit different to set up and in some ways better. Uh, instead of using petroleum jelly or sea gel or anything like that, you just use plain water to get it to adhere to the glass. And once you're done, you don't have to worry about it detaching itself as easily. It's also supposed to be easier to remove, although I haven't done that yet. While you're attaching it, one nice advantage is that it has this grid printed on the back, and so it's easy to cut it to fit your aquarium exactly. I wish the vinyl rolls had something like that. Now, just like the vinyl rolls, bright light will pass through it, uh, but that may not be a problem depending on where your aquarium is. These are more expensive than the vinyl rolls. The material that they're made out of is fairly thin and appears to be kind of fragile, and they may be harder to find. But in general, I really like the one that I'm using, that I've been using for a while now, and all other things being equal, between a vinyl roll and the static cling roll, I'd choose the static cling roll. The acrylic paint background is one that I've started to use on more and more of my tanks, and there are several reasons why this is true. First of all, it's quite inexpensive. A small bottle like this might cost less than a US dollar, and you can buy several bottles depending on the size of your tank. It's really easy to find at hobby stores and things like that, and you can choose from a wide variety of colors. If you ever need to remove it, it's really easy to remove. And if a small portion gets scraped off, it's really easy to just paint over that spot again, and it's as good as new. Of course, there are cons to this method. Uh, it is quite messy to apply, and you'll need to put painter's tape around the frame and edges of the pane of glass that you're going to be painting, as well as um, newspaper or something suitable to protect the surfaces that you're working on. 
You'll need to apply it in several coats. I usually use about three. For the first coat, I usually apply it with a sponge roller and then let it dry. And then for subsequent coats, I'll usually use a brush. I find that if I use a sponge roller more than once, it has a tendency to pull the uh, previous coats off. Be careful not to paint it on too thick and remove the painter's tape with care or you could uh, damage the paint job. Of course, if you do, it's easy enough to fix. One nice thing about acrylic paint is that once you've finished, you have a really opaque paint job. You really don't have to worry about light passing through it. As I mentioned, there are many, many different types of background out there, some of which I've used, but these three are some of the ones that I've used the most. And lately, I'm really a fan of the acrylic paint background. So at the risk of a little redundancy, there's a little background on background. Okay,